Now, there are several kinds of energy, several kinds which we need to consider. Mechanical energy, mechanical energy, thermal energy. I just showed you that with the, with the, uh, the nail heated by driving it in. While we're talking about thermal energy, here is some popcorn, some popcorn. Now you know that if you apply thermal energy to the popcorn, it soon, as a result of this application of thermal energy, of heat, explodes. Why? Because we gave energy to the little, little bit of water in the droplet, uh, in the kernel of corn, it expanded enormously. How many times does it expand? Fantastic. 1,700 times. Isn't that fantastic? No wonder the kernel explodes with a rupturing force. Mechanical energy, thermal energy, acoustic energy. Sure, my vocal cords are in vibration, and that's the only reason you can hear me. I am giving rise to excitation of the air in this place, and it is falling on your eardrum and putting your eardrum into motion, and then the bones in the ear, and finally the impulse gets to your brain. <coughs> acoustic. Uh, magnetic energy. Electrostatic energy. Electrostatic. Let me show you that because it is absolutely exciting. Watch this. Watch. I have here some cork dust, which I put out on the table, cork dust. It is lifeless and dead and inert. Here is a Bakelite hard rubber rod. Now the rod, I say, and later we will say more about it on a program on electrostatics, the rod is electrostatically neutral. I bring it near the cork dust, and what do I see happen? Answer, nothing. Seeing nothing happens is a very important thing to see. Very important. Now I am going to do some work on this rubber rod. Work, work. Now watch. Oh, mamma mia, look at that. The cork dust has been attracted to the rod. Not only that, but it's jumping off. It's jumping off. And would you believe it, this is the foundation of all of our electric science. Indeed, these television cameras could not work were this principle not uncovered. More about energy. More energy. Energy. Here is a massive weight which I have lifted above the level of the floor, the zero potential plane. I am doing some mechanical work on it. I am endowing it with potential energy. Here is a nail in a block of wood, and I release the weight. Look what has happened. It has driven the nail into the block. The heat developed here, very substantial. A toy, energy, a toy, a spring. If I do work on the spring, I store energy in the spring. There is a so-called suction cup on the bottom, and in another program I will show you that that word suction is not a good one ever to use, but I'm going to put a ball in this upper platform, push down the spring, storing some energy in the compressed spring. Now the energy is available to do work for me on the ball. When the atmospheric pressure seeps into that so-called suction cup, it will let the spring loose, and you know the consequence, up will go the ball. There it goes, up went the ball. And there was something else. There was some action taking place in this projectile mechanism, which bears also on momentum and energy. Consider this business of momentum. This gun is a toy, and so we need have no fear about it, but don't play with guns. Concerning momentum, if I shoot the gun holding it far from my shoulder, will it not kick very severely and hurt me? Why? The mass of the gun recoils with a certain velocity, the M and the V, constituting a certain momentum. How do you avoid this kick? You hold the gun tightly against your shoulder so that when the gun recoils, you and the gun constitute a larger mass and therefore less recoil velocity. An excellent demonstration of momentum conservation. Consider a toy. 
made for three-year-olds. Here is a little toy, a, uh, a, uh, a teddy bear <clears throat> mounted on an elastic shaft through his shoulders. He stands in a vertical plane because his center of gravity is below his axis of support. And now what am I going to do? I rolled him away, and he rolls back. And so I am demonstrating a profound principle of physics in a toy for two-year-olds. We stored some elastic energy. It was now available to do work on me to return the car. Or oh, such a toy. An array of geared wheels and a shaft and uh, some uh, 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 feelers in there which rub against other things and produce heat from friction. And notice, I am showing the transmutation of mechanical work into thermal energy as well as into light. Because when bodies get hot enough, they become incandescent. Energy, momentum, very important. Now, as one views the history of this subject, I invite you to study it yourself because for 150 years, there was much dispute on the difference between MV and MV square, <clears throat> which was settled by a Frenchman named D'Alembert. But who gave rise to the problem in the first place? A young Dutchman by the name of Christian Huygens. And I want to show you a picture of him as a little boy at the age of 11, an enchanting little rascal. And I shall have more to say about him sometime on a program on light because he spent his youthful, youthful days throwing pebbles into the canals in his native Holland and watching the ever-growing circles of disturbance and thus was led to the idea of the wave motion of light. And here, finally, is a picture of him in his later days with his, with his, uh, what shall we call it, wig. Now, the idea of momentum must be clearly distinguished from the idea of energy. And I thank you for your attention. Mm -hmm.